my father's place, proclaiming Jesus Christ to the world. Good morning and welcome to my father's place. I have a message called Demonic Times today, and I'll show you why I call it that. That's exactly what the word means. From 2 Timothy 3, verses 1 through 5, we'll start there, but I'll be wandering around a little bit as the Lord has led me and I ha as my notes reflect. And so 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 5, 4, 1 through 3, and other places as well. So I'll pray, and then we'll get into it. Lord, I remember that when I first was filled with the Spirit, I thought everyone else must be too. But you showed me they are certainly not. They're filled with Satan. And I will show it to anyone who has ears to hear on this day as you have directed me. May it go forth in your power, in your name. Amen. So, he directed me to speak about demonic times. The ones we are in right now are demonic times. Using the letters of Paul and a few other references. So, I'll keep you posted and know always that my notes are on from death to life .wordpress com my blog. If you have any questions or want to look up the scriptures for yourself, I don't expect you to run around in the Bible while I'm speaking. I'd rather have you hear what the Lord is saying through me. Demonic times? That's what the word difficult means in 2 Timothy 3 1. But realize this that in the last days, difficult times will come. The word is actually fierce, which is kalepos in the original Greek, the very same word used of the demoniacs in Matthew 8.28. Demoniacs, fierce, fierce demonic times we are in. Amazing. So to begin with, I will step down through 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 5 just as the Lord directed me, it describes those who are demonic. Demonic behavior, because there are demons in such ones. Shockingly, shockingly, you should be shocked. This describes the church in the last days that we are in right now. From start to finish, I'll show it to you. 2 Timothy 3.1. I'll read down through 3.5, and then we'll go back and I'll take it apart. 2 Timothy 3.1. But realize this, that in the last days, difficult, that is fierce, demonic times will come. For men, that's human beings in general, will be lovers of self, lovers of money, boastful, arrogant, revilers, Disobedient parents, ungrateful, unholy, unloving, irreconcilable, malicious gossips, without self-control, brutal, haters of good, treacherous, reckless, conceited, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, holding to a form of godliness, although they have denied its power. Avoid such men as these. So these are lovers of self instead of lovers of God. They want to please themselves, not God. They want to live for themselves, not God. They want what they want when they want it. And they're mad at God if he doesn't give it to them right now. Lovers of money, not lovers of the Lord. Boastful. Boasting in themselves instead of boasting in the Lord. You have nothing apart from what he has given you, but you will boast in it as if you did it. Arrogant, believing they're wiser than the Lord. Revilers, that means blasphemers. Who do they blaspheme? The Lord, because there are demons in them, and they're in the church, and they behave demonically, and thereby blaspheme the reputation of Jesus Christ by claiming they are his. They have a different father. We'll get to that. 
disobedient to parents when they were children, unwilling to accept instruction or correction, ungrateful, never giving thanks, any thanks whatsoever to the Lord, unholy, impure of heart, malicious, gossip, who falsely accuse those they see as a threat to their power. Irreconcilable. This is truce breakers. There's no coming to a place of peace with them. They agree to peace and then declare war. Truce breakers. Unloving, having no natural affection toward anyone. Malicious gossip, we've talked about. Without self-control, their emotions and actions running wild. Running wild. Haters of good. And those whom the Lord has made holy, therefore. Brutal. Fierce. Same word again. Demonic. Treacherous, betrayers, backstabbers, reckless. Just responding by emotion to everything. Conceited, thinking highly of themselves. Lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. Treacherous, betrayers, betrayers, betrayers. And now, that's one through four. And now five. Holding to, that is having, a form an outward appearance of godliness, that is, holiness and righteousness. Although they have denied its power. So they look all holy on the outside. But they've denied its power. Avoid such men as these. From such turn away, is what the original Greek to English says. From such turn away. So this is the so-called church that teaches that you can sin and God understands. This is the church that teaches you can sin because God is blind to your sin. You can do all these evil behaviors, all of them, and he will never be bothered by it. You're saved. Once saved, always saved. This is the behavior of such ones. Such ones appear outwardly to honor the Lord. Oh, Jesus Christ is my Savior. But they are deceivers. They deceive themselves because they are not saved at all, because they do not know the Lord. They are controlled by Satan. You can tell by their behavior. Some even dress in specific ways, somewhere only women wear skirts only, and all of those things to show that they are holy, but it is outward. Inward, they're sinning. Those that go to church every Sunday, all outward. Inward, they are sinning. They're just going through the motions. They know the things to do. They know how to make themselves look that way. They've been taught. But, they disavow, they deny the power of holiness, of godliness. What is that power? I've told you many times. The power to cleanse a human heart and purify it and crucify the sin nature. They deny that. They say it can't be done. They call God a liar. Who calls God a liar? Satan. Whose children are they? Satan's. When you are purified and your sin nature is crucified, then you are holy and only then. The outward works mean nothing. What should you do if you are in a so-called church? where they behave in this way. You watch the church politics and power plays and everything else that goes on. What do you do? From such, turn away. Turn away from the ones who are lying from the pulpits. 
and the, that lie in the boardrooms and that lie in the corporate headquarters. If they're lying, who is their father? The devil. Do you see it? In these first five verses, this is the church. If you look at 426 of 2 Timothy, he says that they may come to their senses and escape from the snare of the devil, having been held captive by him. And he's talking about those in the church. Paul is. Paul is describing the demonic end times church as they call themselves. How can it be that they would become demonic? If you are not filled with the Spirit, if your heart is not pure and your sin nature is not crucified, your house is empty. The Father, the Son, and the Spirit are not in it. Who will come into your empty house? Satan will come in to your empty house, and he will set up housekeeping. Satan can easily possess a person who has disobeyed Jesus Christ's commandments regarding the Spirit from Luke 24, 49, Acts 1, 4 through 5. Do you see it? After verses 1 through 4, Paul doesn't say, well, now I'm going to speak about the church. He just continues on. There's just a comma as he continues on describing the church as they call themselves of today, the church of today. All of it is a description of the demonic behavior of nearly everyone from our experience, and we have been to a lot of churches being pastors. You move around and and go to different pastors' churches to have meetings and things. Oh, my, we see it everywhere. I checked the inter interlinear Bible, which is direct Greek to English. There was no pause. There was no, oh, but now I'm going to discuss the church. No. None. He's describing the church. Haters of God. Gossips, malicious gossips. Ones that will speak a lie in order to keep you from taking what they see as their power away from them. They will do it. Demons in the church. Jeff and I have seen manifestations of demons at a board meeting in a church. And we were not the only ones who saw it at a later board meeting. Some other spirit-filled friends were attending, and they saw manifestations too. Demons in the boardroom. My goodness. And they behaved just as Paul describes here. So why did the Lord ask me to show this to you, shocking you. He wants to shock you into seeing your condition that you might turn back, as I just read from 426 of 2 Timothy, that you might turn back, that you might escape the snare of the devil in which you have been caught. Those who Paul describes in these verses Strut about and exalt sin. That's from Psalm 12, 8. They boast to their fellow sinners in the pews that they're at peace, at peace with God. But there is no peace for the wicked, and they are demonically possessed because they have left their house empty. God is not in them. So Satan comes in, and they do what? He wants them to do. They're controlled by Satan. They are Satan's slaves, as I read from the last chapter 2. So if Paul's description of their behavior 
sounds vaguely familiar to you, it is the fruit of the flesh. If the sin nature is still alive, you're wide open to become Satan's. And he will use your fleshly desires to have you do what he wants you to do. Galatians 5.19, Now the deeds of the flesh, that is the sin nature, are evident, which are immorality, impurity, sensuality, idolatry, sorcery, enmities, hostilities, strife, jealousy, outbursts of anger, disputes, dissensions, that is division, factions, again, dividing, envying, drunkenness, carousing, and things like these of which I forewarn you, just as I have forewarned you, that those who practice such things will not inherit inherit the kingdom of God. If your sin nature is not crucified and your heart is not purified, you will not do as the Lord commands. You will do as Satan, who has set up shop in you, commands. So whose child are you? You're not doing what God commands. You're doing what Satan commands. Whose child are you? Satan's child. Satan's child. Do not be deceived. Children inherit what was their father's, right? You will inherit hell. If Satan is your father. Do not be deceived. You are no longer a child of God. If you have left your house empty and Satan now controls you. So you are not his child. You are not his child anymore. You are Satan's. And you will not inherit what your heavenly father had for you if you had obeyed. You will not go to heaven. Period. Do not be deceived. If your sin nature is still alive and well, and your heart is impure, he Satan will come in and take ownership of you. He will control you completely. How foolish you are to disobey the Lord and to refute and reject his truth. That he has the power to purify you and crucify your sin nature. My goodness, your refusal to obey him in these things reveals that you do not love him, says the Father in John 14, 24. I warn you, just as Paul warned the so-called believers at Corinth who were sinning. 1 Corinthians 6, 9. Or do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived, neither fornicators, that's those who have sex outside of marriage, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, cross-dressers, drag queens, and the like, nor homosexuals, nor thieves, nor the covetous. I want what they have, and I'm going to take it from them. Nor drunkards, nor revilers. Again, those who blaspheme others and blaspheme the Lord. Nor swindlers will inherit the kingdom of God. None of those will inherit the kingdom of God because they are not God's children. They are Satan's because they behave in the same way that Satan does. He commands them and they say, yes, Satan, we will do it. Even though you don't realize that's what's going on. So sinners in the so-called church lie just like their father, Satan. And just like Satan, they create confusion and cause division and hatred. Just like Satan, they are angry and they rage against those who come and speak the truth to them. It should never, ever be. Never. Again, why have they become demonic? I mean, from the pews to the boardroom of churches, as we have seen, to ministry headquarters. 
Why have they become demonic? Because they have refused to obey Jesus Christ's commandments regarding the Spirit. They reject God's power. They reject the truth that he has the power to purify their hearts and crucify their sin nature. Only then is your heart pure. Only then does Satan have no way to come in. You are full of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. He is not going to come near because God is far more powerful than Satan. Glory to God. It is impossible for Satan to possess such a one. That's why Jesus commands you to be filled with the Spirit. He knew these days were coming, and they are here now. I pray that you repent from the heart, honestly repent, and humbly, humbly repent to him for what you have done. Turn back to him. That's what repent means. So you would know the truth by being filled with God. 2 Timothy 2.24 The Lord's bond servant must not be quarrelsome, that is, must not war, that is, church wars. I don't do that. But be kind to all. The greatest act of kindness that his bond servants do for you is to speak the truth to you. Able to teach, patient, when wronged is not in the original Greek. Patient. Verse 25, with gentleness, that is humility, understanding, in my case, that I was once a sinner. Oh, unbelievably so. I was ungodly. Correcting, disciplining, disciplining those who are in opposition. If perhaps God may grant them repentance, that is, soften their hearts so they would turn back leading to the knowledge of the truth by personally experiencing. That's knowledge. That's that word. That's what that means. You personally experience the truth. How? He, the truth, comes in and fully and permanently indwells you. Verse 26, And they may come to their senses and escape from the snare of the devil, having been held captive by him to do his will. The demonic church. I teach you the truth so you might come to your senses and escape from the trap of the devil. I teach you the truth so you would turn back to the Lord. I teach you the truth so you would obey his commandments regarding the spirit. So your house is not empty. Do you not see it? You have been captured by Satan and you are doing his will. You are a prisoner of Satan. Some prisoners of Satan will say, oh no, but it's okay if I sin because his grace is going to, the Lord's grace is going to cover all my sins. But they lie like their captor, like the one they are held captive by. They lie like the devil. John 8, 44, what they teach and what their disciples par- par- back to them, repeat again and again to everyone they speak with, oh, his grace is sufficient. Oh, I can sin, and his grace will cover it. Paul speaks speaks the truth about grace and sin in Romans 6, 1 and 2. What shall we say then? Are we to continue in sin so that grace may increase? The more we sin, the more grace he'll give us? Oh, no. Verse 2, may it never be. How shall we who have died to sin, died to sin, still live in it. You're not dead to sin. If you are doing what the demonic church is doing, if you are not filled with God, you are not dead to sin. He will not come in to a sinning heart. He refuses to be in the presence of sin. Died to sin, dead to sin. So sin has no power over you. And Satan, who wants to dangle something before you all the time, you immediately detect and just absolutely, he has nothing on you. He cannot tempt you to do it. He will tempt. You will not do it. Dead to sin. Your 
heart purified, your sin nature crucified, but most in the church have not done that, and Satan has set up housekeeping, and they are just as Paul describes in 2 Timothy 3. You have listened to apostles and prophets and evangelists and pastors and teachers who are full of Satan too. They are the savage wolves who have come in from the outside among you and even from among you have risen up as teachers and leaders. They are deceivers. 2 Corinthians 11, 13, such men are false apostles, deceitful workers disguising themselves as apostles of Christ. Verse 14, no wonder, for even Satan disguises himself as an angel of light. Demonic times, savage wolves who speak lies like their father, Satan. Demonic times, most leaders in the so-called church are not Christ's. They disguise themselves. They make it look like they are. They'll say the right words, and then they'll lie. They do not even know the Lord, or they would never say what they say and do what they do. In these demonic times, Paul's charge, his command to me and all spirit-filled believers is this. 2 Timothy 4.1, I solemnly charge you in the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who is to judge the living and the dead, and by his appearing and his kingdom, verse 2, preach the word, be ready in season and out of season, Reprove, tell a fault. Rebuke, exhort, implore, beseech. This is this important. This is life and death. This is hell or heaven. Beseech with great patience and instruction. Take heed, act upon what you have seen and heard, what you have heard today. Judgment is coming. Christ is your judge appointed by the Father. Therefore, I continue to preach the word of God, without any apology to you. It makes no difference when or where. It makes no difference if you receive it or not. I speak it. That's what I'm commanded to do, and that's what I will do, because it is life to those who will heed, who will do what it says, what these words say. I will continue to tell your fault to you. You may be angry with me, you may cry, you may do whatever. I will continue to tell a fault to you. That is my charge. That is my command. I continue to rebuke you. I to strongly correct you. I continue to implore you and beseech you. Do I hate you? That's what the people at Corinth said. Oh, you must hate us. He said, oh, no, Lord, God knows I love you. God knows I love you. If I didn't, I'd just shake the dust from my feet and never speak again. I can't do that. I have a charge. I have a command. And so I will do what my Lord has commanded because I love him. And he is in me, and I do not ever rebel against him since he purified my heart and crucified my sin nature. I will not give up on you. I will not give up on you unless the Lord tells me that you are like the rich young man who didn't want to give up his riches, that he did everything else right, the Ten Commandments, but he didn't want to give up his riches. Jesus did not chase after that one. The time Paul next describes in 2 Timothy 4.3, the very next verse, is now. It is now. 2 Timothy 4.3, for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, that is teaching, but wanting to have their ears tickled, with pleasant things, they will accumulate for themselves teachers in accordance to their own desires and will turn away their ears from the truth and will turn aside to myths, fiction, lies, 
myths, fiction, lies. Paul stood in the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, and I do the same. His heart was pure. Mine was pure. He set us before him. He did it. So we stand before him. Paul prophesied that this day would come. I speak to you who are in today's so-called church. You will not endure sound teaching of the word of God. You want to hear what you want to hear. You would rather hear ear-pleasing words that make you feel good about your sin. You have a large collection of Satan's savage wolves who you love the words of. You turn away from the truth and believe the lies. Your house is therefore empty, and guess who has come in? Satan. Hear the words of Jesus Christ, the judge, John 5, 25. Truly, truly, I say to you, an hour is coming, and now is, now is, when the dead, that is spiritually dead, will hear the voice of the Son of God, and those who hear, that is, heed and obey, will live. They will have eternal life, for just as the Father has life, eternal life, himself. Even so, he gave to the Son also to have eternal life in himself. That is, eternal life to offer you. And he gave him authority to execute judgment because he is the Son of Man. Jesus Christ is the Son of Man sent by the Father to die on a cross for you. And you have responded by listening to lies having an empty house, and letting it be filled with Satan. Repent. You have heard the voice of the Son of God through me. He has spoken to you who have a reputation for being alive, but are dead. Revelation 3.1 They will grant you eternal life if you will repent now. This is a limited time offer. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call on him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake their way. Oh, turn back. Escape from Satan. That means it's still possible to repent. But only for a limited time. Therefore, repent today. Lord Jesus, thank you for this word. Thank you for giving me boldness to speak just as you would have me speak and making me one who refuses to bow down to the demonic church of today. In your name I pray, amen. The fields are white and the workers are few, but the Lord of the harvest is faithful and true. He'll send forth more workers to accomplish his plan and pour out his spirit.